Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 6 of our quick progression series. So, in the last episode, we ended with 378,000 in funds, so what I've already done is upgraded our mission control so we can take more than two missions at a time. So you can see I've grabbed these low Kerbin orbit rescue missions to assist Kerfal, Kimlin and Patos Kerman from a low Kerbin orbit. I was also lucky and accepted the mission to rendezvous two vessels, and as it happens, any one of our rescue craft can be a second vessel, so we're going to do all these in the same run. In our last episode we had 216 science points available, so if we go into our research and development facility now you can see I've unlocked a few tiers that we didn't have before. Firstly the flight control tier. Now this is going to give us some more useful winglets that have movable pivot points, and that's going to give us extra control in the atmosphere. We've also picked up the space exploration tier which gives us a few more parts. More importantly for this mission though is the press mat barometer to measure some more precious science. So into the vehicle assembly building now, we're going to modify our rocket from episode 5 so that we can rescue multiple Kerbals. Firstly, we're going to switch out our old winglets for our new AVR8 winglets. We'll ditch that radiator as it was useless to us in the last episode, and we're going to now add the two new MK1 crew cabins under our Science Junior Material Bay. This is actually going to give us space for four rescue missions, so we'll have a spare seat, but you could pick up another tour mission or a fourth low curb and orbit mission here if you find that too. Just for some extra stability, we'll move our strut anchor points upwards. We're going to take our goo units off the top and we're going to pop them in our service bay. Probably should have done that last time. And we'll just pop them up the top, and remember you can use the S key to sort of spin those around, by default they come in underneath like that, strangely. And we'll also add four of our new press map barometers as well. That'll give us some good opportunities to grab some more science. So we'll close that off, and we'll just drag this fifth engine down in our first stage, just so that they're all firing at the same time, giving us better thrust on takeoff. And we'll just rename our vessel Mission 6 Rescue. And we'll just save and launch. Now the first thing we need to do is plan our launch window so that it's going to easily allow us to meet up with the first rescue vessel. So press the M key to bring up map view and we want to time warp until the first of our vessels is around 20 to 30 degrees behind our launch site on Kerbin. It's much easier to start off in front of your target as we can easily adjust that later. These low orbit vessels are all orbiting around 85 kilometers up. So we're going to enable our SAS with a T key and take off. We're immediately going to roll ourselves over to about 10 degrees and hit our prograde marker there. Again, this is going to allow our craft to do a gravity turn slowly so that we can get that much needed horizontal velocity as quickly as we can. Keep in mind, of course, that the less your thrust to weight ratio, the more slowly you're going to want to initialize your gravity turn. Just reducing thrust here so we don't damage ourselves exiting the atmosphere. So we're switching to map view again to check our apoapsis. Our goal here of course is to get as close as we can to the orbit of our first rescue vessel. Full thrust again as we're out of the uh, damaging atmosphere. And as soon as we hit that target orbit line we want to cut our engines entirely. Now if our target was in front of us, being in low earth orbit it makes it very difficult to catch up with the vessel and this is because we can't speed up our orbit much without falling back into the atmosphere at 70 kilometers up. So we'll just time warp up until we get much closer to our apoapsis marker. So rolling the rocket over we're going to burn the rest of our first and second stages. Just switching to normal stability assist just so we continue to point horizontal. If your apoapsis is climbing a little too high or too low, you can point the rocket slightly down or up, and this is not particularly efficient, but uh, we've got plenty of delta V to do our rescues here. Detaching our four rocket booster stage, and again we'll just burn the rest of the fuel in our stage two. Just love watching those four booster rockets float away like that. We'll just time warp closer to our apoapsis marker again, and decouple stage 2. So just time accelerate here. 
and firing stage 3, that much more efficient stage 3 Terrier engine. So you want to burn now until you circularize your orbit at around that 85 kilometer mark. So you want to get your orbit lines pretty much spot on with the other orbit lines of our target. Now we want to set our rescue target by left clicking Kimlin's heap and choosing set as target. And now you'll see a few new markers pop up on your orbit lines. The first thing we need to do is match the orbital inclination of our target vessel. Now if you were able to launch at exactly 90 degrees like we've done here, your relative inclination to the rescue vessel should be almost spot on. But there will still be a small difference. When hovering over your ascending or descending node markers, it'll show you the difference in degrees. You want to get this figure to 0.0, .0 degrees, and to do this we need to time warp until we're at our ascending node. If our angle is a positive number on our ascending node, we need to burn at our anti-normal marker. So that's what we're doing here now. But if we see a negative number there, we do the opposite and we would burn at the normal marker instead. Now you can also do your inclination change at your descending node as well. If this is the case, then you would do the opposite. And as an example of that, if your inclination is a positive one, you would burn towards the normal marker rather than the anti-normal marker. And of course, vice versa. So we're just going to apply a small thrust and we're just going to take out that ascending node difference. And you can see it coming down there. Now if you take a look on your orbit lines, you'll also see these two orange markers. And these markers are called your intersect markers. And they tell you how far apart you are from your target. And what we want to do is match those intersect markers up perfectly. Now in this case we need to increase our orbit time just a little bit to meet up perfectly with our rescue vessel. So we'll only need to do a tiny prograde burn, just a slight adjustment so that we come round at the exact same time. So just doing a tiny little burn here to meet it up as close as we can. Perfect. So now you just need to time warp around until the two vessels meet each other up on the other side of the orbit. So you can see here we're basically almost right on top of each other, we're only a few kilometers apart. Only 1.5 kilometers apart. So you should find that your nav ball has automatically switched to target mode and what you want to do is turn to the retrograde marker and you want to take off all of the velocity in relation to your other rescue craft. And then we're actually going to turn towards our target marker, that's the pink one, and we're going to burn slightly towards that. So just a small burn, you only have to do small corrections here, 10 metres a second is enough and then we can actually switch to our retrograde marker again ready to slow down when we get real close to our target here. Now to speed this up you can do a slight time warp here again just to make things move a little quicker. It's only a few hundred meters away. So just going to wipe off that velocity again compared to our target. And we're now close enough to switch over to that craft. So we've just switched using the square bracket keys and we can now see Kimlin, our stranded pilot, and we can EVA out now. Press the R key to enable the RCS on her jetpack and that'll give you control so you can fly her back to our rescue rocket. We're just going to slowly, slowly, slowly edge towards our craft. Thirty meters now. It can be a little tricky sometimes to get the Kerbal to face the direction that you want them to go, so you have to sort of just play around a little. Just a few meters now. And we're just going to transfer Jeb out of the main cabin so that we can get the new pilot in. So we can board. And there's our first rescue completed.
So now what we want to do is select our next target rescue vessel, which is going to be Kerfal's Wreckage. Kerfal or Kerfal? Not sure which. Now we're quite a long distance away here, so what we want to do is burn prograde just to elongate our orbit. And that's just going to make this process quicker, so we can push our orbit out quite a lot. So what's happening in here is the longer it's going to take us longer to do the orbit so the craft behind us is going to catch up faster and you can see here after one orbit that's already considerably closer so we'll just wait until we pass those intersect markers so that it reevaluates where we're going to be next time around and you can see that we actually need to burn retrograde a little we're actually going to come out too far ahead so we need to burn retrograde a little to meet up correctly Five, four, three, two, one. There we go, just at around one kilometer. So again, we're going to time accelerate around until we meet up on the other side of the orbit. And again, we're going to turn retrograde and we're going to burn to wipe out all of our velocity in comparison to the target. Try to get it as close as you can. And now we're just going to head again towards Kerfel Trekkage. 11 metres per second is plenty. Then we'll turn retrograde. And we'll just wait until the wreckage gets as close to us as it's going to. Then we're going to wipe out that 11 metres per second. So again, turning retrograde. 300 metres, 200 metres, 100 metres. And we'll just wipe that out now. So only 54 metres away, we're just going to switch over to the rescue craft, pressing our square bracket keys. We're going to EVA. Let go of our craft, press the R key to turn on our RCS, and we'll head towards our rescue ship. Probably should have rotated the ship so that we were on the right side to start with. So we'll come up underneath. Just gently come in to grab the ladder. Oop. Oop, come on. Oh. <laughs> grab it, grab it, grab it. Ah, still didn't grab it. Yeah, we'll try that again. Back in. Grab... what the... <laughs> this guy does not know what he's doing. Okay, come on, back in we go. Grab... why is not... why is grab not working? Okay, we'll just try to board it this time. We'll just transfer Jeb out of the way. Uh, not Jeb, Kimlin. We'll transfer Kimlin out of the way. <laughs> and we'll have another go. Come on. Grab. Yes, we grabbed. Okay, and then press B to board. Okay, so rather than demonstrating that again, we'll just cut the uh, cut the footage until our next rescue, just so that uh, we're not going over the same ground over and over. And we're now here with Patos Kerman. So we're going to grab Patos. Oh, same problem with the, I don't know why I can't grab today. That's strange. I've actually not had that problem before. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Grab and board. Now we're just going to move Pados out of the way. We're going to put our normal pilot, Jeb, back in the pilot seat. There we go. And there we have it, so we've done our three rescues. 
So while we're up here, we're just going to see what science tests that we can do here to take back with us. Just going to check our goo units, make sure that there's nothing left to pick up there. Oh, there is a little bit, so we'll keep hold of that. 0.5 of a science point. We'll grab our barometer readings there. Just grab the temperature as well. And as usual, we grab a duplicate set of these just in case we miss some science that we need. So we'll just see if we can do a crew report. Uh, no, we can't. We'll do an EVA. Grab EVA. No, nothing to grab there either. So we'll reboard and we'll head back into land. So we'll turn retrograde. And we're just looking for Kerbin here. There's, uh, there's our KSC, our, our space centre. So again, we're going to try to land quite close to our space centre if possible. And we'll just wipe off some of our orbital velocity just so that we fall back into the atmosphere. So you can see there we had loads of fuel. We could have done another rescue or bought another tourist up or, or anything there. Plenty to spare. Trajectory lines here to the ocean. And in we come. So just re-entering the atmosphere now. Just pop our, uh, our last stage off. Actually, that was probably silly. I should really have punched that out to the side, not in front of me. Okay, so in we come. Actually, we might just see if we can get a little bit of science uh, here as well. We'll uh, just take a couple of readings. We'll just uh, we'll just do an EVA. Oh, actually, that's not a good idea. We're in the atmosphere. Oh, that could have been bad. Oh, geez, it was just before re-entry too. Okay, we're going to grab a. We'll just run our barometer check there. So grabbing some from there. We're going to grab our temperature data. We probably haven't gotten temperature data from high atmosphere before. No, we haven't. Okay, so we're going to grab that. I grab the pressure data again just to be safe. Make sure we got it all. Excellent. We better close that up before it burns off. Okay, excellent. Oh, 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 jeez. Yep, that's why we should have ejected that sideways so that it didn't come back and hit us. Oh, that was close. Okay, so re-entering now. We'll just time accelerate through this. Don't seem to have any overheating issues at the moment. It's probably because our material bay is higher up in our craft, so it's not actually getting as much heat. Whoop. Whoop. It's kind of getting a bit of an angle there. And just down through the atmosphere. We've got some pretty scared looking rescuees here. They shouldn't be scared though, because they are in the hands of Jebediah Kerman, our number one pilot. And we'll pop our chutes. Do a crew report. We haven't actually grabbed that one yet. That's good. Do an EVA. Let's try that. Dangerous. Okay, we'll grab an EVA. Excellent. We'll reboard there. And down we come. Splash down. We'll just see if we can get any more science from anything here. Whoop. Now we need to get back in and recover our vessel. So you can see there we've grabbed another 58.7 science from our mission, just as residual science. And we've recovered a good chunk of cash from these missions as well. 
And we've also got our three new Kerbinauts who are already advanced to level 1. So to buy a new Kerbinaut can actually cost you a few hundred thousand, so that's a good saving there too. So you can see there we've, we've completed our rescue, grabbed a lot of reputation points and a good chunk of cash. We've also done a couple of milestones. We've had our first crew transfer and our first rendezvous. So with 150 science points and over 300,000 in cash, we're ready for our next mission. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. And down we pop. Whoa. Oh, that's not ideal. Not ideal. We're rolling. Ah. Right. Whoa. SAS has helped us there a little, so we'll open up our service, but oh, I've made it roll again. Really should have picked a better landing spot.